Hi there guys and welcome to this, the first in a six part series of videos all about Unraid 6.9. These videos will all be released over the next seven days and will cover everything you need to know about Unraid 6.9. Whether you're an existing user who just wants to upgrade or you're totally brand new to Unraid and you want to set up a new server from scratch well, this series is for you, and this in part 1, we're going to look at what is Unraid 6.9 and what's new. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Hi there guys, and welcome to this, the first part and introduction to a short series of videos which are all about Unraid 6.9. And I'd just like to take a moment quickly before I start to give a big thank you to Lime Technology not only for making this awesome OS but also for reaching out to me and asking me to make this series on Unraid 6.9 for them. So, how this series is going to be set up is it's going to be split into six parts and all the parts can be found in a playlist which is called All About Unraid 6.9.x. So, why Unraid 6.9.x? Just what does the X mean? Well at the moment, Unraid is on version 6.9. Well the X part refers to the revision of the 6.9 version of Unraid. And so what does the 6.9 part mean? Well the 6 is Unraid version 6. And yes, for those guys new to Unraid, there have been many versions before. Obviously the lower the number, the older the version of Unraid. So of course we've had version 5, 4, 3, and going right back even further, Unraid started its life in the early 2000s because a software engineer was trying to solve his own problems, wanting to be able to store, access and have reliable backup for loads of different media. And the RAID technology back then well, it was really quite restricted, often requiring you to have just certain hardware, and with this being the case, it just wasn't good enough for him, deciding that a hardware agnostic approach for the problem was the best way forward. And so that's when the early Unraid operating system was first born. Okay, so that's a little bit of history. Let's get back on topic. So obviously, Unraid version 6 is the newest, and the biggest changes that's come to Unraid happen between these version numbers. For example, the differences between Unraid version 5 and Unraid version 6, they were huge. So the previous versions before Unraid version 6 were just basically network attached storage, and any extra functionality was achieved with the use of plugins. But then came Unraid version 6, and as well as being a network attached storage device, Unraid also became an application server running Docker, allowing you to run a multitude of different apps in various Docker containers. Unraid also added the ability to be a virtualization host, meaning then you could install any operating system you want to, whether it be a Windows, Mac, Linux or FreeBSD, any system you want could be installed. And not only could it just be installed, as time went on, the ability to pass through individual hardware to the VM, such as a graphics card, USB controller, this became a reality to the average home user. This hardware pass-through enabled people to run full-fledged gaming systems with pretty much indistinguishable performance from running it on bare metal hardware itself. And it wasn't long before top tech YouTubers, such as Linus from Linus Tech Tips, saw the huge potential of this for the average user and started experimenting in projects such as two gamers one CPU and then eventually running Unraid servers with seven gamers and one CPU. And ever since those first videos were made, the whole process has become easier, better, more streamlined with each subsequent release of Unraid 6. So we've had 6.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and now finally 9. And in each one of these major upgrades, whilst maybe we don't see quite such big differences as we do when we go from version say 5 to 6, these other revisions we do see massive improvements to not only the virtualization side, but to the Docker and the NAS side as well. And so Unraid 6.9, this new version brings some pretty exciting changes as well. So let's briefly look at what's actually new in this version, and then we'll go in the subsequent videos in this series and set up a server using all of these new features. So firstly a new feature, but not exactly new functionality per se, is multi-language support. 
So now Unraid has the ability to download different language packs to use with the Unraid OS. And currently that's English, Spanish, French, German, Dutch, Arabic, Chinese, Portuguese and Polish. And whoa, that was pretty hard to say in one breath, so I'm glad there's not currently any more languages. But for sure, over the coming months and years, there's definitely going to be a whole load more languages that will be supported. OK, so what new functionality is there in 6.9? Well, all Unraid users know that Unraid has an array and an optional cache drive. And the array is where all us data hoarders store our terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of data. And the cache drive, which can be a single or multiple drives, is mainly used for two things, to accelerate writes to various shares, or for using to store virtual machine images, and app data for Docker containers, because most of us use SSDs or NVMEs for our cache drive, so we've got really fast storage. And now in Unraid 6.9, we can create multiple different pools, which brings us loads of different possibilities for what we can use them for. We could have a separate pool for storing our VM images, we could have another pool for storing maybe Plex metadata, but also what we can do with our Unraid shares is we can set different shares to be able to use a different cache pool for accelerated writes. This can be really useful when you're running something like Nextcloud. You can store all of your Nextcloud data on a share on the array, and then rather than having that share use the regular cache drive that you use with your server, you can set up a dedicated cache pool, maybe fast NVMe drives, to accelerate all of the writes with their own cache for that particular one share. And in the part of this series where we look at setting up multiple cache pools, we'll look at some of those ideas. And on RAID 6.9, it supports up to a maximum of 35 different name pools. And each of these pools can consist of between one and up to a maximum of 30 different drives. Well, another new feature you might like is GPU driver integration. Unraid now has built-in graphics drivers for AMD, integrated Intel i915 and A-Speed graphics drivers. These drivers are the open source in-tree GPU drivers and they are all included in the build of Unraid. If you want to install separate third-party drivers such as Nvidia's Linux GPU driver then this can easily be done just by downloading a plugin and adding it that way. And Unraid's Docker service, there's been some upgrades there too. We'll be having a look at that later when we set up our server and install a couple of containers. And virtualization, that hasn't been forgotten. There's some awesome upgrades to that, making it super easy for us to pass through various different devices. Gone are the days of when we used to have to edit our syslinux config file, stubbing various devices. We can now select the devices which we want to be able to pass through, check them with a tick box, reboot the server, and on boot these devices are stubbed and then available for pass through straight from the VM template. And again, don't worry if you don't know how to do this, when we install Unraid 6.9 later we'll be setting up a VM, passing through various hardware using this method. So these are the main improvements to Unraid 6.9. There are other little improvements as well and we'll be looking at them as we go through installing Unraid 6.9 next. So. That brings us to the end of this video, this first part, about what is Unraid 6.9 and what's new. The next video in this playlist is Unraid 6.9, new installations or upgrading from a previous version. But for now, it's time for me to go. Now, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share this video with anyone who you think might find it interesting. And as always, I can't finish this video without giving a huge thanks to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you so much guys for supporting me. I really, really do appreciate it. Okay guys, so that wraps up this video for now. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you in the next video.